Pues mira, mira. Okay, calling the joint meeting on ways and means and judiciary to order. This is the 9.30 agenda. This meeting, including audio and video of remote participants, is being streamed on live on YouTube. And you will find links to viewing options for all Senate meetings on the live and on-demand video page of the legislature's website. In the event we have to end this hearing due to technical difficulties, committee will reconvene to discuss any outstanding business tomorrow, March 3rd, 10 a.m. in this room. A public notice will be posted on the legislature's website. If you're interested in reviewing the written testimony, please go to the legis legislature's website. You will find a link on the status page for the measure. Okay. First item, Senate Bill 1046. Our recommendation is to pass with amendments, adopt LRB tech amendments, blank the appropriation, and amend per the AG's testimony, section 139-6A HRS and section five of the bill on page 19, lines nine through 10 to read as follows. A, no person may be appointed to a law enforcement officer after June 30, 2024, unless the person, uh, unquote, uh, section 139-6 B HRS in section B of the bill on page 19 lines 18 through 19 to read as follows. B, beginning on July 1st, 2024, the board shall issue a certification to an applicant who meets the requirements of section 139-7 A HRS in section six of the bill on page 20 lines 10 through 12 to read as follows. The Department of the Attorney General after June 30, 2024, unless the person possesses a valid certification issued by the board pursuant to section 139-6B, section 139-7B2 HRS and section six of the bill on page 20, lines 18 through 21 to read as follows, who entered into employment with the applicable county police department or state department before July 1st, 2024 and termination of employment would violate any valid collective bargaining agreement. Amend the fiscal year of the appropriation to fiscal year 23, defect the date to 2050. Any discussion? If not, Chair votes aye. Okay, Chair votes aye. Vice Chair votes with reservations. Senator, Senator Mesa Lucha? Aye. Senator Morawaki? Aye. Senator Shima Bukuro? Aye. Senator Taniguchi? Aye. Senator Favela. Aye. And all other WAM members are excused or recommendation adopted. Okay, for JDC members, the same recommendation. Any questions or concerns? You'll have to say it orally because I can't see everybody. Uh, if not, uh, Senator Keo Kaloli for the vote. Members voting on SB 1046 SD1. Uh, Chair Rhodes. Aye. Vice Chair goes aye, Senator Ocasio. Aye. Senator Gabbard. Aye. Senator Kim. Aye. Senator Lee. Aye. Senator Favela. Aye. Recommendation adopted. Thank you. Chair Donna Cru Del, Del Cruz. Okay, next item, Senate Bill 1105. Recommendation is to uh, pass an amendments, adopt LRB tech amendments, effectively to 2050. Any discussion? Not chair votes aye. Chair votes aye. Vice chair votes aye. Senator Inoue. Aye. Senator Kidani. Aye. Senator Misalucha. Aye. Senator Morawaki. Aye. Senator Shimabukuro. Aye. Senator Taniguchi. Aye. Senator Kanuha. Aye. Senator Favela. Aye. The recommendation is adopted. JDC members, same recommendation on SB 1105. Any concerns? If not, vice chair for the vote. Members passing with amendments, uh, noting the presence of all members of the Judiciary Committee. Are there any no's or reservations? 
Seeing none, recommendation adopted. Thank you. Thank you. Bill 2068 recommendation is to pass with amendments, adopt the LRB Tech Amendment 2050. Any discussion? Not sure about side. Okay, with 10 members present, any reservations? No. Any opposition? Recommendation adopted. For JDC members, same recommendation on SB 2068. Questions or concerns? If not, Vice Chair. Uh, members passing with amendments, uh, noting the presence of all members of the committee. Any no's or reservations? No. I have a no vote for Senator Acasio. All of the members vote aye, recommendation adopted. Thank you. Thank you. Next item, Senate Bill 2378. Recommendation is to pass with amendments, adopt the LRB Tech Amendments, blank the appropriation, defect the date to 2015. Any discussion? Not sure, vote say. Hey, with 10 members present, any reservations? Reservation. Any opposition? Recommendation adopted. Uh, for JDC members, same recommendation on SB 2378 to pass with amendments. Questions or concerns? If not, Vice Chair. Uh, members passing with amendments, uh, are there any reservations? Reservation. So noted for Senator Favela. Any no votes? Seeing none, Chair, all of the members vote aye. Recommendation adopted. Thank you. Thank you. Next item. Senate Bill 2379 recommendation is to pass with amendments, adopt LRB tech amendments. Any discussion? If not, Chair votes. <laughs> with all members present, any reservations? Reservation. Any opposition? Your recommendations adopted, Chair. Thank you. For Next item, Senate Bill. JDC, oh, for JDC members for SB 2379 uh, with amendments, questions or concerns? Seeing none, Vice Chair. Uh, uh, with all members present, noting the reservations of Senator Favela, are there any other members with reservations or no votes? Seeing none, recommendation adopted. Thank you. Thank you. Next item, Senate Bill 2398. Uh, we're going to defer this item to... Uh, tomorrow at 10.25 with JDC uh, in this room. Okay, 1025 or 10? Well, I'm okay with 10, but uh, I think your office asked for 1025. Oh, okay, I, okay, that's fine. I just didn't hear that part of it. That's fine, 1025. Okay, okay next item, Senate Bill uh, 2583. Recommendation is to pass with amendments, adopt LRB tech amendments, effective date to 2050. Any discussion? Not sure what side. Okay, with all members present, any reservations? Reservation. Any opposition? Your recommendations adopted, Chair. Sure. JDC members on SB 2583, same recommendation with amendments. Questions or concerns? If not, Vice Chair. Uh, members, SB 2583, SD 1. Uh, again, noting the presence of all members of the committee and the reservations of Senator Favela. Are there any other reservations or no vote? So noted. All other members vote aye. Chair, recommendation adopted. Thank you. Thank you, Nick Senator Bill 3039. Recommendation is to pass as is. Any discussion? Not sure vote side. Okay, we have 11 members present. Any reservations? Any opposition? Your recommendation is adopted. Thank you. For yes, no, JDC members, same recommendation on SB 3039 uh, as is. Questions or concerns? Seeing none, Vice Chair. Members passing unamended, are there any reservations or no votes? Recommendation adopted. Thank you. Thank you. Next item, Senate Bill 3124. Recommendation is to pass as is. Any discussion? Not sure, vote side. Okay, with all members present, any reservations? Any opposition? Your recommendation is adopted, Chair. For JDC members on SB 3124, same recommendation, pass as is. Questions or concerns? Seeing none, Vice Chair. 
Uh, members passing unamended, any reservations or no votes? Um, can you repeat the bill? This is SB 3124 SD1. Okay, chair recommendation adopted. Thanks. Thank you. Next item, Senate Bill 3133. Recommendation is to pass as is. There's already a defective date. Any discussion? Not sure, vote side. Okay, we have 11 members present. Any reservations? Any opposition? No vote for me. Thank you. Your recommendation is adopted, Chair. JDC members, same recommendation as is. Questions or concerns? If not, Senator Kiel Kaloli. Members, uh, SB 3133, SD1, noting the presence of all members of the committee. Uh, uh, members, are there any reservations? Okay, Vice Chair goes with reservations. Are there any no votes? No. Mm -hmm. Okay, I have no votes for Senators Favela and Ocasio. All other members vote aye, recommendation adopted. Okay, thank you. Thank you, next item, Senate Bill 3142. Uh, recommendation is to pass with amendments, defecting the date to 2050. Any discussion? Not sure, vote side. Okay, with all members present, any reservations? Any opposition? Your recommendations adopted, sure. Uh, for JDC members, SB 3142 relating to workers' comp, same recommendation uh, with amendments. Questions or concerns? If not, Sir Kiel Members passing with amendments, any reservations or opposition? Recommendation adopted. Thank you. Next item, Senate Bill 3183. Recommendation is to pass with amendments, adopt LRB Tech amendments, and per ETS testimony, amend item six on page three to include ETS as part of the coordinating agencies to assist DOT in the development of the program. Any discussion? Not chair votes aye. Okay, with all members present, any reservations? Any opposition? Your recommendations adopted. For JDC members, same recommendation in SB 3183 related to digital identification Any uh, with amendments. Any questions or concerns? If not, Senator Keo Kaloli. Members passing with amendments, any reservations or opposition? Chair recommendation adopted. Thank you. Thank you. Next item, Senate Bill uh, 3237. Recommendation is to pass with amendments, adopt LRB tech amendments and blank the appropriation. Any discussion? If not sure, vote side. Okay, with all 11 members present, any reservations? Any opposition? Recommendation adopted, Chair. For JDC members for SB 3237 related to child welfare services, same recommendation with amendments. Any questions or concerns? If not, Vice Chair. Uh, members SB 3237 SD1. Again, noting the presence of all members, are there any reservations or no votes? Chair, recommendation adopted. Thank you. Thank you. Next item, Senate Bill 3347. Recommendation is to pass with amendments. Adopt the LRB tech amendments, blank the appropriation. Any discussion? Not sure, vote side. Okay, with all members present, any reservations? Any opposition? Your recommendation is adopted. For JDC members on SB 3347 relating to the right to exit the sex trade, same recommendation with amendments. Any questions or concerns? If not, Sir Kiel Kaloli. Members SB 3347 SD1. Uh, are there any reservations or opposition? Chair recommendation adopted. Thank you. Thank you. Next Chair, item. Can I have a recess. Oh, recess. Okay, reconvening. Okay, we're on item uh, Senate Bill 3350. We're going to defer till tomorrow, uh, 1025 in this room. Thank you. Watch this. Yeah. Okay, I think the, the rest of the bills are JDC lead. So if you're ready to go, we'll start on those. Yes.
Okay, first up is SB 2143, this defines board packets and requires each state board packet to make its board packets available publicly at least 48 hours prior to the board meeting. Uh, recommendation is um, technical and clarifying amendments from OIP, just the technical and clarifying amendments from OIP. Questions or concerns? If not, Vice Chair for the vote for JDC. Members voting on SB 2143 SD1, the recommendation is to pass with amendments. Noting the presence of all members of the committee, are there any reservations or no votes? Seeing none, Chair, recommendation adopted. Okay, thank you. Uh, ways and means, same recommendation. Chair votes aye. Okay, with all 11 members present, ways and means, any reservations? Any opposition? Recommendation adopted. Okay, thank you. Next up is SB 2172. This is one of the underground fuel storage tanks bills uh, related to Red Hill. Uh, recommendation is to adopt a couple of them, two amendments uh, proposed by Department of Health, change the designation of underground storage tank system to large capacity underground storage tank system for clarity purposes, and we'll add a definition of underground injection control line that specifies an already existing line. Uh, I believe this is the one the Board of Water Supply also had us propose amendment, but we believe that these two amendments take care of that one as well. Questions or concerns? If not, Vice Chair for the vote. Members voting on SB 2172 SD1. Recommendation is to pass with amendments. Members, are there any reservations or no votes? Recommendation adopted. Is it mean same recommendation? Okay, with all members present, any reservations? Any opposition? Recommendation adopted. Thank you. Thank you. Next up is SB 2181. This requires certain unlicensed but accredited private schools to annually submit health and safety documentation. Recommendation on this one is to pass unamended. Concerns or questions? Seeing none, Vice Chair. Members, SB 2181 SD1 passing unamended. Are there any reservations? Any no votes? <clears throat> Chair, all members vote aye. Recommendation adopted. Thank you. Uh, ways and means, same recommendation. Okay, with all 11 members present, any reservations? Any opposition? Recommendation adopted. Thank you. Next up is SB 2183. This exempts certain DOE employees from state residency requirements under certain circumstances. Recommendation is just to put on the effective date, July 30, 2075. Questions or concerns? If not, Vice Chair. Members, SB 2183 SD1 passing unamended. Uh, no. Passing with amendments, I'm sorry. Um, are there any reservations or no votes? Yeah. Senator Ocasio, I can't hear you. Reservation. So noted. Chair, uh, all other members vote aye. Recommendation adopted. Thank you. Ways and means, same recommendation. Okay, with all members present, any reservations? Any opposition? Your recommendations adopted. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, members. Next up is SB 2189 related to the Board of Education, changes the way the chairperson of the board is selected. Recommendation is to pass unamended. Questions or concerns? If not, Senator Kiyo Members, SB 2189 passing unamended. Are there any reservations? Any no votes? Recommendation adopted. Ways and means, same recommendation. Okay, with all members present, any reservations? Any opposition? Recommendation adopted. Thank you. Thank you. Next up is SB 2207 relating to Hawaii Interagency Council on Homeless adds a representative of a LGBTQ plus focused organization to be included as a member of the Hawaii Interagency Council on Homelessness. Recommendation is to pass as is. Questions or concerns? Seeing none, Vice Chair. Members, SB 2207, SD1, passing unamended. Are there any reservations or no votes? Recommendation adopted. Thanks. Um, same recommendation for ways and means. Okay, with all members present, any reservations? Any opposition? Recommendation adopted. Thank you. Members, next up is SB 2298 relating to wages, increases the penalty for employers who knowingly fail to pay the wages of their employer employees. Uh, recommendation here is to pass with an amendment. We'll remove knowingly for the Class C felony. Uh, so that the that's newly created by this bill, so that the mens rea for the existing misdemeanor applies. So same same state of mind requirement 
for the new crime as for the ones that currently exist. Questions or concerns? If not, Vice Chair. Members, SB 2298 SD1 passing with amendments. Um, any reservations or no votes? Recommendation adopted. Uh, wait, same recommendation for ways and means. Okay, with all members present, any reservations? Any opposition? Recommendation adopted. Thank you. Next up is SB 2305. This relates relating to the comprehensive reoffender system. Uh, clarifies that the comprehensive reoffender entry system provides programs and services that result in the time release of inmates when the minimum term has been reached rather than the maximum. Recommendation is to pass unamended. Questions or concerns? If not, Vice Chair. Members, SB 2305 passing unamended. Are there any reservations or no votes? Recommendation adopted. Same recommendation, ways and means. Okay, with all members present, any reservations? Any opposition? Recommendation adopted. Okay, thank you. Next up is SB 2384 relating to Hawaii products preferences, amends the procurement preference for Hawaii products to only apply to ag agricultural goods. A recommend recommendation is to pass with three amendments proposed by the uh, State Procurement Office and I do have prior concurrence for this. Remove public works construction solicitations from the Hawaii products preference required DAGs to notify registered construction products vendors of changes to the law and add a symbol or fabricate to the definition of Hawaii input. Questions or concerns? If not, Vice Chair. Members, SB 2384, SD1, passing with amendments. Are there any reservations or opposition? Mm -hmm. Wait, um, there's an appropriation. So can you? No. Oh, no, 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 no. It's just a Hawaii preference. Mm. Wait, recess. Okay, back in from recess on SB 2384. Um, for judiciary members, I've spelled out the uh, proposed amendments already. Uh, any questions or concerns? If not, vice chair for the vote on uh, SB 2384 with amendments. Members passing with amendments, noting the presence of all members of the committee. Are there any reservations? Any opposition? Recommendation adopted. Uh, same recommendation, ways and means. Okay, we have 11 members present. Any reservations? Any opposition? Recommendation adopted. Thank you. Next up is SB 2433 relating to the re offender reentry programs. It requires Department of Public Safe Safe Safety to expand existing model programs. Uh, recommendation here is to pass with just a defective date, July 30, 2075. Questions or concerns? If not, Vice Chair. Members voting on SB 2433, the recommendation is to pass with amendments. Are there any reservations or no votes? Reservation. So noted for Senator Favela. All other members vote aye, recommendation adopted. Same recommendation, ways and means. Hey, with 11 members present and noting reservations from Senator Favela, any other reservations? Any opposition? Recommendation adopted. Thank you, members. Next up is SB 2600, another storage tank bill. Uh, recommendation, and I do have prior <clears throat> concurrence for this, is um, to pass with some amendments, all from the Department of Health, uh, prohibit in only large capacity tanks from the underground injection control line instead of all tanks. Define a large capacity underground storage tank as a single tank with capacity more than 50,000 gallons, or more than one tank with capacity more than 100,000 gallons and define the underground injection control line to uh, similar to what we did in the other bill. Questions or concerns? If not, Vice Chair. Members, SB 2600, SD1, passing with amendments. Uh, our members, are there any reservations or no votes? Recommendation adopted. Same recommendation, we and means. Okay, with all, <clears throat> excuse me, with all 11 members present, any reservations? Any opposition? Recommendation adopted. 
Sorry. Um, next up is uh, SB 2607 relating to independent legal counsel. And it, um, Chair, Don, uh, Chair De La Cruz, did you want to put a bad date on this? Yeah, it has uh, appropriation. Okay. Uh, so the and we'll put a defective date of July 30, 2075. Otherwise, we'll pass on amended. Members, question? I'm sorry, this is about uh, independent legal counsel for the Department of Hawaiian Homelands. Uh, members, any questions? If not, vice chair for the vote. Members, voting on SB 2607, the recommendation is to pass with amendments. Are there any reservations or no votes? No vote for me. No vote for Senator Favela. All other members vote aye. Recommendation adopted. Uh, ways and means same recommendation. Okay, with all members president noting the no vote from Senator Favela. Any reservations? Reservations. No reservation with Senator Taniguchi. Any opposition? Other opposition? Recommendation adopted. Uh, next up is, S I'm sorry, before we go on to SB 22667, uh, Senator Dela Cruz, was there another bill that you wanted a bad date on? I have you as meeting one on the one we just passed. 2987. Yeah. And was there another one? No, this 2987. Okay, great. All right, moving on to SB 2667. This extends the deadline for the YA Housing Finance and Development Corporation to renegotiate an existing or issue a new ground lease for the Front Street Apartments. Our recommendation here is to pass as is. Questions or concerns? If not, Vice Chair. Members voting on SB 2667 SD1, the recommendation is to pass this measure unamended. Are there any reservations or no votes? Recommendation adopted, Chair. Same recommendation, ways and means. Okay, with all members present, any reservations? Any opposition? Recommendation adopted. Thank you, members. Next up is SB 2748. This requires the Department of Health to submit a request as allowed by the federal code to the United States Department of Education to allow parents of children with a disability to continue receiving early intervention services. Our recommendation is to pass with just technical amendments. Questions or concerns? Seeing none, Vice Chair. Members, SB 2748, SD1, passing with amendments. Are there any reservations or opposition? Chair, recommendation adopted. Thank Same you. recommendation, ways and means. Okay, with all 11 members present, any reservations? Any opposition? Recommendation adopted. Thank you. Next up is SB 2817 relating to educational annual report requirements. Uh, repeals a couple of uh, reporting requirements. Okay. Recommendation is to pass with just an effective date, July 30, 2075. Questions or concerns? If not, Vice Chair. Members voting on SB 2817, the recommendation is to pass unamended. Are there any reservations? Sorry, there is an amendment. No, no, no. That was an amendment. Oh, I'm sorry. Wait, uh, 2817, passing with amendments. Any reservations or no votes? Recommendation adopted. Same recommendation, ways and means. Okay, with all 11 members present, any reservations? Any opposition? Recommendation adopted. Thank you, members. Moving on to SB 2987. This relates to crimes on ag land. Um, recommendation is to change the uh, paradigm for the, the crimes part of the bill. There's a, a second section about a uh, task force. So instead of uh, making the penalties really large, I'm going to suggest instead that we have minimum, I'm sorry, mandatory minimum sentences for each level of crime committed on uh, ag lands. So for a petty misdemeanor, you'd get at least seven days. For a misdemeanor, you'd get at least 30 days. For a class C felony, you at least get 60 days. Class B felony, you'd get at least 90 days. And it'll specify that these minimums are in addition to any other jail term or punishment otherwise provided by law. And do have prior concurrence on that. Any other questions, any questions or concerns? Just the effective date. Oh yeah, I'm sorry, I forgot. Uh, yes, uh, bad date of July 30, 2075. Questions or concerns? If not, Vice Chair. Members, SB 2987 passing <laughs> with amendments. Are there any reservations or no votes? No votes for me. No. No votes for Senators Ocasio and Favela. All other members vote aye. Recommendation adopted. 
same recommendation ways and means. Okay, with 11 members present and noting the no vote from Senator Favela. Any reservations? Any opposition? Recommendation adopted. Thank you. Chair, before we end the 9.30 um, agenda, um, Senate Bill 206. No, we're on 3044. Oh, sorry. Oh, sorry. Now he, he wants to make a correction to a vote he took. I can't wait to the end. I can't wait to the end. I just wanted to correct my vote before we hit the 930 agenda for Senate Bill 20661. Is that a WAM beat or? That was WAM and then you then then go. Well, I mean well, we gotta reconsider it, huh? I guess. Okay, the recess. Time. Okay, reconvening. Okay, uh, members, we're going to reconsider previous action on Senate Bill uh, 2068. Uh, recommendation is to uh, pass with amendments, LRB tech amendments effective date to 2050. So Chair, the other part of it I don't know is do we have to vote on the reconsideration or can you just do that as with the power of the chair? You have to ask for no objections. Okay. Yeah, any discussion? Any reservations? Objections? Okay, so that's to reconsider. And then now, uh, recommend. So for, I'm sorry, for JDC members, any objections to reconsidering? Okay, seeing none. Thank you. Okay, now recommendation will be to pass with amendments, adopt LRB tech amendments, effective date to 2050. Any discussion? Not chair votes side. Okay, with all 11 members present, any reservations? Any opposition? No vote for me. Thank you. Okay, for JDC members, uh, same same recommendation, uh, SB 2068, um, voting again with um, with the same amendments. Questions or concerns, if not, Vice Chair. Uh, with all members present and noting the opposition of Senator Favela, are there any other members with reservations or no votes? Ocasio. No, for Ocasio. So uh, Ocasio and Favela in opposition, all other members vote aye. Recommendation adopted. Okay, thank you. Thank okay, you. So Senator Del Cruz, I'll return to SB 3044. Is that okay? Yeah, correct. Thank you. Okay. Uh, moving on to SB 3044, this is relating to tobacco manufacturer qualified escrow funds. Uh, recommendation is to pass unamended. Questions or concerns? If not, Senator Kio Kaloli. Members SP 3044 SD1 passing unamended. With all members present, are there any reservations or no votes? Recommendation adopted. Same recommendation, same recommendation ways and means. Okay, with Sorry, with, with 11 members present, any reservations? Any opposition? Recommendation adopted. You guys keep moving. Thank you. Uh, thank you. Next up is SB 3086 relating to cybersecurity updates and improves clarifications to reflect the existence of the Hawaii State Cybersecurity Program. Uh, I'm going to defer this indefinitely. The House version, the House companion has already crossed and it's a, it's a by request page. Uh, next up is, I don't know, Del, Senator Del Cruz, do you have to defer it too or just mind deferring it? That's it. No. Oh, yeah, no, I don't, yeah, okay, same recommendation, ways and means. Okay. Uh, SP 3414, <clears throat> relating to marriage licenses, repeals fees related to obtaining a license to solemnize civil manage marriage ceremonies to conform to requirements of religious and judicial marriage performers. Uh, the recommendation here is to accept the DOH amendment, and so instead of going to zero for the uh, for all marriage licenses, there would be a $25 fee for a license to solemnize a marriage that would be applicable to all solemnizers. And it directs the license fees to DOH's Vital Statistics Improvement Fund. So first, Senator Dela, uh, Dela, sorry, Senator Dela Cruz, are you okay with that? Because that's clearly uh, 
WAM jurisdiction. Oh, yeah, it's fine. Okay. Members, questions or concerns? If not, vice chair for the vote. Members voting on SB 3114, SD1. The recommendation is to pass with amendments. Uh, with all members present, are there any reservations or no votes? Reservation. So noted for Senator Favela. All other members vote aye. Recommendation adopted. Same recommendation, ways and means. Okay, with 11 members present and noting the reservations from Senator Favela, any opposition? Any other reservations? Recommendation adopted. Thank you, members. Next up is SB 3127. This renames the Hawaii Workforce Development Council and does some other things. Again, uh, the House version has already passed its final committee. It's a by request bill, so I'm going to defer it indefinitely. Same recommendation, ways and means. Thank you. Next up is SB 3293 relating to assistance for persons completing a term of imprisonment establishes within the Department of Human Services a four-year pilot program to provide housing and child care vouchers to qualified applicants. Uh, recommendation is to pass with just an effective date, July 30, 2075. Questions or concerns? If not, sir, Kale Kaloli. Members, SB 3293, SD1, SB 3293, with amendments. Passing with, sorry? With, with amendments, amendment. right? Okay. Um, noting the presence of all members, are there any reservations or no votes? Recommendation adopted. Same recommendation, ways and means. Okay, with 11 members present, any reservations? Any opposition? Recommendation adopted. Thank you, members. Next up is SB 3324 relating to infrastructure maintenance and housing subdivisions. This establishes a working group. Uh, recommendation is to pass with an amendment. We'll delete the Chapter 84 exemption for the working group, which is Chapter 84 is the ethics chapter. Questions or concerns? If not, Vice Chair. Uh, SB 3324, SD1, passing with amendments. With all members present, are there any reservations or no votes? Chair recommendation adopted. Same recommendation, ways and means. Okay, we have 11 members present. Any reservations? Any opposition? Recommendation adopted. Thank you. Are you, uh, ways and means, are you going on? We'll, we'll, I'll, uh, I'll adjourn the JC meeting and we'll go ahead and leave. Thank you very much. See you tomorrow. Thank you. <clears throat>
appreciates the intent of this measure, uh, we need to amend our testimony a little bit. We learned that uh, the Department of Human Resource Development is opposing the measure. Um, we uh, do find that telework, uh, as we've implemented in the pandemic, has been very helpful, and we hope to be able to continue having a hybrid telework uh, option for our employees. Uh, and we also note that our uh, recent study showed that it can reduce traffic congestion and it does lead to worker satisfaction. Uh, however, we defer to DHERD on uh, the uh, details of this measure. Thank you, Chairs. Thank you. Uh, next is Office of Enterprise Technology Services. Uh, I see Doug, Doug Murdoch. Aloha, we'll stand on our written testimony, but defer to DHERD on the issues raised in their testimony. Uh, we have DHERD, uh, Riker Wada. Hi, good morning, Chair, Vice Chair, members of the committee, Riker Wada for the Department of Human Resources Development. Um, you have our written testimony, uh, and so I'll just make a few quick points. Um, uh, DHERD, again, appreciates the intent, and we're in full support of telework uh, going forward for the state of Hawaii. Um, the, the four points are, number one, uh, the subject matter of this we do believe is uh, most appropriate, appropriately dealt with through collective bargaining and not legislation. Uh, number two, there, a statewide policy on telework already exists and has existed since 2010, and we are in the process of reworking uh, the same pro um, telework um, uh, policy with uh, both HGA as well as UPW. Um, uh, the third point is that uh, if individual policies are required to be created, we actually believe this will create more inconsistencies and more confusion for our state uh, executive branch employees. Um, and lastly, um, for some of the other requirements of the bill, uh, in, noted in our testimony, DHERD does not have the resources to um, fulfill some of those requirements. And so we would ask that if this were to continue, that we would be uh, given staff and time uh, to be able to incorporate uh, these changes. Uh, happy to answer any questions. Thank you to uh, the committee. Thank you. I have a question. Oh, oh, question. Senator Delacruz. Uh, Mr. Rada, did, did you extend the current telework policy till next February? Or um, is everyone uh, ret returning to work? Yeah, so the 2010 telework policy continues to rain, remain in existence. What we did uh, extend is we did enter into a supplemental agreement with uh, HGEA to include um, within the telework policy, the interim guidelines. And those interim guidelines effectively were additional guidelines we incorporated for pandemic type work. Um, the, the largest, and there's a few in there, but the largest two uh, relate to full-time telework um, and um, the ability to use telework for dependent care as well. Okay, yeah, but did you extend that to next February? The, the supplemental agreement runs until next February. That's correct. But okay, that, so is, that means so that means departments can actually continue to telework till next February, despite the fact that the governor's emergency proclamation ends at the end of March. Yes, that's correct. So the 2000, as I, as I mentioned, the 2010 guidelines are in effect. So even if the interim guidelines were not there, telework still exists for the state executive branch. Okay, so why, why don't you have the telework policy online? Um, you have all your other policies online. I saw the flexible hours. I saw all your other policies, but the telework policy is not online. Yeah, you know, I, we that was pointed out to us, uh, Chair. And so what we're doing is it, it seemed um, probably premature or maybe late at this point to put the telework policy online in, in consideration of the fact that we're anticipating that a new policy will be um, agreed upon, hopefully very shortly. And so if that's the case, we'll, we will put that policy up. Okay, because when I tried finding it several times, that's why I called you. I texted you the flexible hour one, but I still don't see the teller policy up. So when are you planning to put that up? Even yeah, so the the, the, I think what we would be doing is we'd be putting the telework policy up as soon as it's negotiated. Um, all of each department, HR. But why not just put the 2010 up right now until you get a, uh, a new policy? Uh, we, we can definitely take that back and, and consider that, Chair. Um, but as, as noted, because, in terms of... Because terms we're of, getting calls from employees, especially with the cost of gas going up, we're getting lots of emails. So people, so, people are asking for guidance and you're not providing any. So, 
Chair, the, the telework policy has been distributed both to, to the, the legislature, so the House as well as the Senate, as well as each of the department's HR officers. So anytime anyone has a call or they, they need information on the telework policy, they should be contacting their department. They're either their supervisor or their department HR officer. Those are the people who are going to be most responsible and most able to okay. answer a I specific can tell employee's you, questions. I can tell you that's not happening. I know employees who go to their, their, their HR um, person and they don't know. They don't even know about half the stuff that's on the website. So I'm not sure the kind of training that DHERT is providing the, the HR officers throughout the state, but it's not consistent at all. Uh, Chair, if those, if, if your constituents and our state employees are having those concerns, I would, I, I would ask them to specifically contact us. There's no way we can address, you know, anecdotal, um, these anecdotal questions. But, no, if, but you if should, they, we've talked about this before, right? You have no training for any of the HR for people throughout the departments. Chair, I, I would respectfully disagree with that. Uh, the the DHERD actually has a very wide and extensive training program. Yeah, but you don't people. enforce it. You guys don't show. You guys don't follow up with any of the, the HR people throughout the departments. Chair, even, when you, they, even when they interview people, the questions sometimes are inappropriate. The they're they're last minute on how they respond. It's it's very inconsistent throughout the whole state. Again, Chair, if, if there are concerns with particular instances, we're not aware of it, aside from general statements. And so if there are particular okay. questions, they should be referred to. That's fine. To we brought up a lot of these concerns during COVID, and you still haven't responded to most of them. Uh, so again, that's Chair, fine. It doesn't, it doesn't sound like it's going to go anywhere, so we'll just have to wait till the next cabinet. I have a question. Yeah, okay. uh, Senator Inouye. Yeah. Um, so, Riker, is this bill necessary? No, uh, we, we don't believe it is, Chair, uh, uh, Senator. Sure, it's nice. Okay, thank you. Yeah, so Riker, um, specifically with regard to this telework policy, when the pandemic started, was there training provided to the departments? We, what we actually did is we provided both the original telework policy, the 2010 policy, and then for all of the HR officers, we did provide training in the HR council. And okay, so, can you, can you provide the dates of that training so that we at least have a record so we can make sure? Because, I mean, obviously, if the department HR people are saying they didn't know about it, then at least we know where to go and not, not blame you. And yeah, can sure. You also, give us the attendance of who showed up. We are, yeah, it's sorry, Chair. It's actually not our meeting, it's, it's a monthly meeting of the HR officers. Well, I'll, I'll provide the dates. Okay, so wait, you said earlier it was a train. My question was, did you guys provide training on this when the pandemic started? And you said yes. So you're saying no, there was some sort of meeting and no, maybe it came up. Is that what it is? No, so let me be clear. So there was a meeting of the HR council and we provided training at that meeting. Okay. And is there any attendance? Again, my like my question was, have the departments been provided this training? or at least information about this existing policy that you're talking about? So the, the answer again, Chair, uh, uh, Senator, is yes, because effectively through the individual HR officers, they are the people responsible for each individual department. Okay, and when the pandemic started, did you guys do anything to make sure they were aware of this telework policy? Because we brought up telework from the beginning. So uh, the, the answer, uh, Senator, is yes. At this meeting, we provided all the documents and we went through and trained each of the HR officers on how this, the policy is to be implemented. Okay, but you just said that you don't know who actually attended and whether or not all the departments went because you said it's not your meeting. Th that's correct. What, what I'm going to do is I'm going to contact the organizer, organizers of the HR council and I will see if I can get the attendance as well. Okay, that would be appreciated. So, so I think what, what your, um, your 2010 policy that was in existence wasn't known by everyone and, and then it went into sort of limbo while you, during the, the um, emergency um, pandemic situation. But you're saying you're now reinstituting it. So I think it's unclear if you want consistent application across all departments. So that policy, if it's not posted anywhere, you can see we even went uh, to some of the departments and there was inconsistent application within a department. So I think that 
brings up the concern of needing to have a policy on telework that's statewide, unknown and known to everyone, beyond just the, the uh, voluntary arrangement of telework. So that therein lies the problem that that we're addressing here. So, but, Chair, let me let me try and explain this. So, there, as I mentioned before, there is a statewide policy. The 2010 guidelines have been in effect since 2010. The interim guidelines were additional guidelines that allowed people to do more to more access to telework effectively. So, so the, the best way. The, so, excuse me, but if you have the 2010 policy now in existence, what are you doing now? on negotiating. What are you negotiating now? If in fact you have a policy and it should be known by all departments, what are we talking about in your interim? So, Chair, the what we're what we're actually the specifics of what we're discussing are confidential as in terms of collective bargaining but effectively i think you can imagine like telework has changed drastically since 2010 and so the use of different types of technologies um who has access to it why they have access to it and then the lessons we've learned from the pandemic have drastically changed how telework i think can be implemented for the executive branch and so that's what we're discussing now how what changes well, we know he telework during the whole pandemic Oh, okay. okay. Any other questions, members? Yeah, I'll just follow oh, up on yeah. that then. Um, let's be clear then. There's a 2010 policy, but now you have a supplemental uh, agreement with HGA at least, but not with the other unions, right? Is that what yes, I'm hearing? Well, no, okay, no, so now let me answer, ask my question, okay? So sure. now that you have this supplemental policy, has there been a briefing of the HR people in the departments about the supplemental policy? The, the supplemental policy is continuing to incorporate the interim guidelines that we published at the beginning of the pandemic. So it's what we're basically saying is the telework exceptions that we've granted during the pandemic are continuing. Because those exceptions were, were based on the emergency proclamation and the suspension of chapter 89, they, they sunset it. And so what we did, the supplemental did was it continued to incorporate those same exceptions. And yes, um, we, we have talked to the HR officers about this as well. Okay, can we get a record of when you did that too? Then? So okay, okay. sure. That'd be appreciated. Sure. <coughs> so record, none of the supplemental policies were online either then? It's, it, yeah, that's correct. It, it, the supplemental is incorporating the interim guidelines, which has been distributed to each of the okay. departments. So when you look at your agenda, there is zero information on anything regarding telework. I'm sorry, what, what agenda, Chair? No, if you look at your website, <coughs> I'm looking at your website, I don't see anything on telework. That's no correct. telework policy at all. That's correct. It's been distributed to all other departments, Chair. But why, so why would you put flexible hours policy online, but not the telework policy? Uh, again, Chair, we're, we're going to look at putting that on, but uh, like I said, we are in the process of negotiating a new one. And so it makes more sense to me to, ju to just but put your, the most updated stuff. But your own department is not consistent in what it puts up and what it doesn't. Why not put all the policies online? Okay, uh, again, Chair, we'll, we'll go back and take, up, take a look at that. Well, that just makes me concerned that some of the information you're providing is not accurate because if you don't even have all the policies online. How do we know you act, who you spoke to, when you had the trainings, who verified that they took the training? Normally when we even take any type of ethics or discrimination training, harassment training, we have to sign a form saying that we took the training. Do you have documentation like that? For who, who we spoke to? For who you provided training to in regards to all of these items we're talking about. No, I, I will see what documentation we have for who, who was in attendance. So when you provide training, do you have those who you trained sign a statement, I took the training? I'm for, aware for, of the policies. For certain types of training, it is required. So for instance, our EEO training, which is required by everyone, you have to sign off when you take it. You have to- no, That's it. not what I asked. I'll, I'll just be clear. Did any, when, when people took the telework training, did they, did they sign any consenting form that they took the training? No, not that I'm aware of, Chair. Okay, any other questions? Just a follow-up. Um, when I heard um, 
Senator Gill um, was explaining that he asked you about HR and the supplemental, I guess, uh, um, telework. So what I heard from you, and maybe you can correct me, um, what I heard from you is you called them, you talked to them. Uh, it was just them going over it, or you actually had a training with them? Because it, what, what you was answering from uh, Senator Gill was you talked to them about the, the telework, uh, the extension or whatever you guys have in place now. But I didn't see that you said that you guys actually trained HR. You let them know what was their training. So, uh, Senator, basically what happened, right, is when we published all of this stuff, we, distribute, we distributed everything we published to each of the departments via their directors, deputy directors, and... Uh, uh, Riker, he's just asking you a simple question. Are you just distributing the information, notifying them, or are you actually doing a training? It's sure, A or so B. I Sure, so I'm trying, I'm trying to answer the question. No, no, it's just A or B. Do you just distribute? We, we or train. Do you actually do a, do a training? We train. Okay, so how many trainers do you have? In, in that particular meeting, it, we only, uh, it was all of our HR staff, but the particular telework policy was distributed and explained by myself, our deputy director, and our branch chief in charge of telework. Was that in person or, or um, virtual? Virtual. Okay, but there's no consenting form that they took the training, that they understand the policy. You don't know who was there. You don't know who was online. You don't know what dates they were. That I, I'm going to get the dates, and if I can, I'm going to get who was in attendance. Could you also send us the policy that was used for the training, what they received? Yeah, all the I, materials I, that were provided. I, I, I will send all of those to, to the committee chair. Senator Kidani. Senator Kidani. Uh, Mr. Wadham, I have a question with regarding to teleworking. If your employee is teleworking and they get hurt wherever they're teleworking from, I'm assuming it's their home, is the state responsible for the injury or are they responsible for that injury? Uh, it depends on the nature of the injury and when it was, but generally speaking, the state would be responsible for the workers' compensation. So if they're at home and they fall off their chair at the desk they're using because it's not a proper chair or if they're cooking their lunch and they get burned, it's the state's, it's on the state. That's correct. Thank you. Any other questions uh, for Riker? Okay, uh, next we have HGA. Uh, <clears throat> I see Michelle Kuihara Klein. Hi, good, good morning, morning, Chairs. Bye. Good morning, Chairs, Vice Chairs, and members of the committees. Michelle Kurihara Klein on behalf of the Hawaii Government Employees Association and on behalf of our Executive Director, Randy Pereira. You have our written testimony before you, which is in opposition to the legislation itself, uh, but in strong support of the concepts and benefits of telework. And I do want to um, point out also that late last night, I apologize for the tardy um, communication, but we submitted a joint letter from DHER Director Riker Wada and our HGEA Executive Director to request deferral of this measure. Find it very unusual for both the employer and the exclusive representative to be in complete alignment on an issue, um, as I'm sure all you veteran lawmakers usually see us on opposite sides of the table. I do want to um, also point out that legislation in totality that deals with telework is unnecessary as we are, as uh, Director Wada had mentioned, currently bargaining over an updated policy and legislation may unnecessarily confuse and delay or even hinder our bargaining process. And so therefore we respectfully request a deferral of this measure. I'd be happy to answer any questions if any of the committee members have them. Thank you. Thank you. Members, any questions? Yeah, I guess I have a question. Senator Del Cruz. So, Michelle, when, when you have some office assistants who have to telework, who are allowed to telework, and others who are forced to come in, how do you guys explain to your members and reconcile that that's fair? Those decisions are made by mutual agreement with the employer and the employee. And so we take guidance from the employer as to what their operational needs are. Okay, but if they're both the same position, they get paid same or similar amounts, um, one person gets to telework, the other has to drive in, spend gas, spend time, 
And so the feedback we're getting is that a lot of people feel like that's unfair. It reduces morale. Um, the, other, the other feedback that we've been getting is when uh, supervisors can telework, but all the office assistants and secretaries have to go in and they're digitizing things so that their supervisors can telework. So how, how, how do you think that that's fair? Well, I think that there is an inherent unfairness because it has to be, you know, any agreement has to be agreed upon with the employer. And so for these reasons, this is why, again, I think the legislation misses some of the point in allowing the departments to drive some of the decisions versus allowing DHERD to drive the decision. So we have heard a lot of com similar complaints that you have, um, and I'm sure that many of your colleagues have about the inequality um, and this is where we are hopeful that if there is a master policy that is bargained with DHERD, that there's consistency throughout the departments. Okay, so we, we want to achieve the same thing. We believe that without a policy, there's inconsistency across the board, which is why there's unfairness for office assistants, secretaries, other, other uh, paid staff who unfortunately are not paid well, and yet they're having to come in. Uh, while supervisors get to telework. So that's one of our, our, our largest concerns. Okay. <clears throat> Senator Keith Avon. I just, I just have a follow-up question to his. I think you state, I think Mr. Wada indicates that there's been a policy in place since 2010. So that's why I think we're a little concerned about this inconsistency. I think you said that each department can decide, but if DHERD isn't giving any guidance, during the pandemic, um, isn't it better to have a statute that might set it up and allow the departments the flexibility or at least direct DHER to set up a policy? We think it's best to have um, a po one policy that impacts all departments across the state, but HGEA also represents employees in other jurisdictions as well. So we look for consistency across jurisdictions when bargaining. So in the situation that Chair Dela Cruz raised about a clerical employee, that same clerical employee um, position would be maybe treated differently across departments, but equally across, um, across jurisdictions. And so this is where we're looking for consistency and justification from the employer on why certain positions are or are not allowed telework. Well, that's the question then, right? I mean, I, Mr. Riker insists that there's been a policy since 2010, yet we are seeing inconsistencies. So that's the issue. I mean, do we leave it up to collective bargaining? I mean, we've been in the pandemic for three years and it doesn't, the inconsistency continues. If this was something that really was something to be bargained and need a supplemental agreement, then it should have been done. Yeah, fairly soon, right? Or are we just relying on the governor's emergency of authority to just say we're not going to we're not going to bother with that hello chair this is Riker. would oh, wait, wait, the, question, the question was for hga <laughs> yeah i i'm sorry vice chair would you be able to re, re, repeat your question i, I apologize oh, no, i think that answers my question thank you okay thank you apologize Any other questions members okay. uh, senator you know michelle i yeah. asked I asked um, D heard if this measure, this bill is necessary, but you also heard the comments earlier um, with the questions to D heard as well. So having said that, but I thought I heard you say that a policy should be clearly stated as well. So is this bill necessary or if there should be a policy set by the legislature? So we'll hold steadfast to our position that legislation is unnecessary because we are currently at the bargaining table to hammer out an updated policy. Um, we have had several meetings with DHERD and the employer to um, ensure that all of the details are worked out. And I think there are a wide variety of issues that are still being worked out inclusive of um, travel, uh, tra host site and travel site locations. Um, and then again, looking at that issue of consistency and fairness across the board. So the short answer is we would, we continue to request deferral of this measure because we want to allow the bargaining process to address this issue. Senator Kidani. It's the opposite. Uh, 
for Michelle. Um, did H has HGEA visited any of the work sites during since the pandemic? Yes, we have our union agents have been very busy visiting all work sites across the state and all jurisdictions as well. So when they visit, do they do they notice any um, any unusual things? Like are the same people reporting to work all the time and others, whether they're supervisors or directors, et cetera, uh, able to work from home every day? I think um, earlier in the pandemic, there was a lot of inconsistency and questions, but as far as I'm understanding from our field agents, um, the concerns that are being raised has been significantly reduced in the last several months or so. However, I can double check with them to see with our field staff to ensure that this is an accurate statement and I can get back to you about that. So Thank I understand you. the concerns that are being raised. Thank you. And then my second question would be, given the fact that uh, um, if they are teleworking uh, from home or wherever they're teleworking from is considered their place of business and the state is responsible then for any injury caused at their place of work, um, would the would the union would HGEA then um, concur that should the employer want to visit their place of work to see that it's safe that that would be allowable? I believe that is addressed in the 2010 telework policy that the employer has the right to I think for lack of better words inspect the telework site for safety. Um, but I will um, co confirm and ensure that that statement is accurate as well. I, I am led to believe that there is language that allows the employer to, to address, uh, look at the telework site. So the, the employee's home in essence. Thank you. So for Mr. Wada, are your directors aware of that policy? Yes, the same uh, policy as well as the documents that are associated with it have been distributed to all of the departments and directors. Thank you. I, I just want to point out distributed and aware is two different things. So I'm not, that's where I go back to if they consent to something, then you know that they were at least if they had to have read it or they, they wrote that they read it, even if they didn't, but they're put on notice versus just distributing it. There, there is, I'm not sure if you understand the difference, but there, it, it, there's a different impact. Any other questions of uh, Michelle? Uh, I, I have one. Um, you know, this is a voluntary arrangement between employee and a manager, a specific manager. So it really is important to have policies that say, these are the questions you ask. This is the agreements you have. Does the guidance have that kind of instruction so that we can be sure that there is consistent application across all departments in your training? or in what you tell your, um, you know, your agents? Um, I believe so, uh, but I, I also understand that this, the uniform application is one of the issues that we are contending with as we are seeking to update. So, you know, the, 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 the policy has existed since 2010. But you know that Director Wada had pointed out that the pandemic has really upended, I think there were you know, several handfuls of employees who may have been teleworking prior to the pandemic. And then 2020, the world changed and I think it shifted so quickly that we have been having to um, address things as they come up. And so I believe um, one of the things that we are seeking in this update is the uniformity and consistency in the policy and its application. So, you know, um, because it's, um um, voluntary and it's it's something that you know it dif differs from branch to branch or unit to unit um, there's also the need for something that is across the board for the state's um, provision of efficient services and and cybersecurity is really critical so do you do the the employer employee arrangement is is sort of one part of it, but the other slices are the technology and ensuring that our technology that they use when they're, when they're offsite uh, is, is really protected. So that is not 
within the guidance that I can see that you folks have worked on. And, uh, and that's why we bring OETS in, in, and in terms of you know, how you reconfigure office space is also something that is not a condition of employment, so to speak. So have you folks discussed that at all? Or are you, are you working on that? I am not sure on the finer details about the negotiation on the update, but I can find out and I will definitely make note and ensure that our field our field staff that are negotiating this policy all are aware of the Senate's concerns. And we would defer to the employer on ensuring cybersecurity and in full support because we're, we are taxpayers too. So we would want to ensure that information is held confidential regardless of the location of the employee. Thank you. Uh, any other questions? No. Senator Dela Cruz? I just, uh, is Riker still on? Yes, Chair. So I, I, I'm going, I'm on your website now. I see safety office training schedule, workplace violence training, drug and alcohol testing program training. I see nothing on here about telework training. Correct, Chair. As I mentioned, this was for the HR officers. And so it's not something like the EEO training where we're offering a particular class and then people sign up for it. This was for the, the, the HR officers. Okay, so I, I still don't see, I and mean, why not just put that up then? You put all this other training on, because this is safety offices. This is not everybody, this is just safety offices. Are, um, are you talking- the safety offices training schedule. So this training schedule is only for safety offices. You only have that on, but you don't have, this is not for everybody either, but it's on your website. Sure, and we have our, our training office through our, our both in person as well as LMS where we have- okay, It's just inconsistent. So if you're saying that training that's available to everybody is on your website, but that's not the case. Training for specific groups are on your, your website, but you don't have any of what you're talking about on your website, which is towards specific groups. Sure, and that goes to what you were asking about earlier, Senator, in terms of inconsistencies. There, there are inconsistencies. Yeah, your own website. Right. Your own, your own availability of what's out there. And, and a lot of that is based on operations, Chair. So to address your earlier question about uh, office assistants, for instance, one office assistant may have a job where they can do their work remotely. Right? No, I'm fine. Instance, doing I'm fine. I'm not asking about that. I'm asking about the training and what's available. Okay. <clears throat> and we'll get the, what we what we talked about earlier over to the committee. I have a question. Yes, Senator Keith so The existing 2010 policy, I assume that applies to all state agencies. Is that right? Uh, yes, all state executive branch agencies. So when I say that, we're we're not talking about DOE, UH, or HHSE. Okay. So do you know if so? DOE, DO, I guess UH, they have their own policy. If they have any, do you know? Um, I know UH most recently updated theirs. They have the most updated telework policy. I'm not sure about the Department of Education. Oh, and was their policy negotiated with the union? Yes. Okay. So if we wanted to get a copy of that, we'd have to get it from them? Yes, I, I, uh, that, that would be most appropriate. Then what about DOE then? Uh, as I mentioned, I'm not real sure. They're, they're in a slightly different position because most of their positions are are face-to-face. -face. And so I don't know how much need they have for telework, but they, they may have a telework policy. Honestly, I'm not uh, sure, Senator. Okay. Now, do you intend to negotiate any supplemental agreements with UPW then? Does UPW even fall under telework then in your mind? So the reason that we've included uh, UPW in, in reaching out to try and negotiate this is during the pandemic, we've identified about two classes of work, which is of literally a handful of people. It's, it's probably less than like 10 people in the state, but they may be eligible for telework. And so we're reaching out to UPW to see if they would like to enter into an agreement as well. Okay, thank you. So, so, like one last question. So, if you're negotiating with HGA 
and you negotiate, you still have to negotiate with UPW. So each one, if we're looking at consistent application, and it's it's going to be different from union to union, how are you going to, as a state, make sure that we have consistent application across the departments? If if we're hoping to to well, I mean, we are going to be we are going to be consistent across. Our policy will be consistent. If we can't reach agreement with one of our unions, then that we, they would just not be included in telework. Any other questions, members? Uh, just, just. Uh, Sen Senator Favela. <clears throat> so, 2010, you guys had this um, telehealth. Since 2010, um, and you knowing that you were going to probably have these encounters with uh, collective bargaining and the unions, from 2010, but Senator uh, De La Cruz just said, 2010, it doesn't even have anything old on your website to even talking about any kind of type of training. So even though the pandemic came and we are in telehealth now, you had this policy or this thing put in place from 2010. So nobody talked to work on something with having some kind of um, outline or basic policy um, so that when we had come to this point where we're at, um, there would have been more, um, um, I guess the negotiations would have been different. But now you guys are trying to negotiate with the unions on the collective bargaining, but this is 2022. So I, I still can understand when you come back and tell us that you guys had this thing in from 2010, but then in the website that Senator De La Cruz would look at, it doesn't even have a peep about 2010 if you want any kind of sort of training or even do want to do any kind of uh, tele, um, you know, home, home working from home. So I, I, I just don't understand that. So, I mean, maybe you need clarification on why was that dormant from 2010 to now um, because sure. of the pandemic? Sure, Senator. So the policy is actually pretty extensive. Like I said, I'll forward all of that, the actual 2010 policy, as well as the interim guidelines to the entire committee. It has been in existence. It's been drafted. It's been available since 2010. However, from 2010 until 2020, it was very, very rarely used. Um, and, and when I say very rarely used, I'm, I'm guessing probably less than like 10 to 20 people in the entire state of Hawaii over the course of the, you know, every year. So basically very few people were using telework. For, for, for 10 years. When the pandemic hit, we basically dug this up and, and, and we needed it uh, in order to continue to effectuate work while people were working remotely. In the, in the same period, we also recognized that for the past 10 years, te you know, telework has changed very drastically. And that was the impetus for us going back to HGA and now UPW and saying, hey, can we like rework on this? Can we redesign this to make this more efficient and more effective? excuse me, for everyone. So that's that's the process that we're in right now. Uh, so I, what I'll do is, like I said, I'll forward the entire committee, the 2010 guidelines, along with all the associated forms that need to be filled out. I will forward the interim guidelines and then for the committee as well, uh, as I mentioned earlier, I'll, I'll forward the dates uh, and, the, and the training um, in terms of the interim guidelines. Just one follow up. So in 2010, you had less than 25 people are doing this 2010 policy. So they never think to you if you had it on the website or you had information about the training. In 2010, you probably would have had more, maybe like 26. Because you just said you guys kind of want to dust it off and, and try to re-implement it when the pandemic came and try to implement it now in 2022 because how drastic tele, uh, um, you know, working from home had changed. Uh, we, we understand that, but if you had something in place we had some kind of outline. All you needed to do was update it as the changes drastically come in. But it seemed like none of that was even in consideration. So I understand you guys are going to do that now and you guys are going to work with this now. You will give us the information now. But again, this is 2022. So when you guys seen that this thing was um, put together in 2010, you guys still didn't think when the pandemic was happening, to even still yet to put information on your website to start training these guys or getting HR to train these guys to have some kind of porthole that you can do that. But what I'm saying is it's okay that you can give us all this information now because you're being asked. But why do you have to be asked? Why you guys just couldn't have just done it? 
That's that's what I can't understand. Because you guys knew about it. You said you did. You just said that drastically when change since 2010 to now. So you noticed the change. But where is it on your website? Where is the information is being given? That, that's the point I want I want to know. I mean, you know, I understand, you know, the pandemic and all that, but you know, we gotta stop blaming the pandemic and the coronavirus for everything. You know, we gotta figure out for sure. Oh, maybe somebody forgot to put it on the website. Maybe for somebody forgot to update it. Maybe nobody went input or maybe nobody will talk about it. But going forward, we, we cannot keep just blaming the pandemic and and the negotiations and everything. This should have been done in 2010. Even though drastically changed, these things with the unions and all of this should have been done in 2010 when you guys were really considering those 25 people that was out there should have had some kind of collective bargaining or some kind of outline that you already started. But it seems like you guys don't even have it. You guys just have the policy from 2010. So I don't know. I mean, like I said, you will give us some paperwork, but that's fine. I'll chair Thank you. you. Thank you. OK, Senator De La Cruz. So are you saying that because it was from 2010, that's why it wasn't on your website? Because the policy was from 12 years ago? No, Chair, I, I, honestly, I, I don't know why it's not on the website. Okay, because I'm, I'm looking right now at your policies for underemployee benefits. Most of those policies are, are from 2012. There's one from 2015, and the oldest is the flexible working hours policy, which is from 2003, which is seven years before you had the telework policy, but that's up online. I'm not sure if you have a hold of this or it doesn't seem like anybody's paying attention to making sure that this is all done and and um, and that all the information is available to all of our employees. Who's in charge of this? In, in charge of the telework policy, Chair? So who's in charge of making sure that all of your policies are online, all of your policies are transparent? Because, uh, like I mentioned, I you have the tele the flexible working policy that's from two thousand three. That's up. Sure. So uh, again, I, I don't know. I don't. I don't think we have a specific position for it, chair. So it it would be myself. It would be the director. Okay. Anyone else? Oh, I have a question. Is Michelle still there? Hi, I'm chair. Hi. Hi. So um, what I'm hearing is that you folks have worked on this policy and it's in process. Um, and you know, because it's a voluntary arrangement, if we um, looked at this in terms of um, having HRD be the, the, the coordinator to, to um, address what we, we think are, are important is not only uh, technology and office reallocation of office space, but also the, the, the consistent application of chapter 89. If we had language in that HRD would also consult and confer, um, that would address what you guys are doing now. Is that correct? I would respectfully disagree, Senator. I, in all honesty, we view this as a bargainable and negotiable issue. So consult and confer has a different meaning where it's much more passive in the arrangement or the agreement, but a negotiation, you know, there is a different level of weight um, involved with a negotiation and a bargaining. And then additionally, we would um, take this policy out to our membership for ratification. But if in fact it's a voluntary arrangement and it's not an employment condition, is that negotiable or is that one of the issues that we would confer and consult so that it would, we would negotiate when it does affect employment conditions, but this is voluntary, totally voluntary. So the a telework agreement will and does impact an employee's um, conditions of work, right? Fundamentally, it, it impacts their condition of work and that is with reserved in the space of bargaining. So, Although, so the, the telework policy in and of itself should be bargained, this is our position, and negotiated between the union and the employer. When you get down into 
um, the, the actual impact between the employee and the employer, then it needs to be based on mutual agreement. So, you know, although it's quite rare, there are situations where employees will de deny or turn down the opportunity to telework um, or an alternative work schedule because it just might not be beneficial to them. Or maybe they enjoy going into the office and want to continue to go into the office. So, um, you know, there are a, a, a myriad of situations where we want the employee to be empowered to make the decisions that are best for them because it does impact their condition of work. I think that's where we, we see the need for a policy because the um, guidance that I read, the definition, uh, is that the employee requests and, and the employer then says, will it affect on the productivity of the unit or can I allow this person or is it uh, is it safe to have the person work from home? Uh, all of those issues come into play if we had a policy on what kinds of questions should be asked uh, in terms of an individual situation. So it, it seems that the guidance itself says that it's the employee that asks, not the employer that requires. I think that the pandemic has showed us that that situation works both ways um, when there was there were well, mandates. That's an emergency it, situation. We're trying yeah. to take that out of the emergency situation to how can we use telework to help the state and the employee and the community benefit from um, less, less um, if, if people can, if they can uh, work from home. And it's, yeah. it's, it's a policy that we're saying, and everyone, all of you are saying is important. It's here to stay. So let's try to do it right. Yes, yes, I agree with that. And I would point out there, there may be a situation, I'm not quite sure, where the employer is looking at their physical footprint in the office and wanting to reduce the size. So the employer in that situation may, may initiate the conversation about telework, they themselves. So I think maybe it's rarer, but there are situations where it would work both ways, where either the employee could make the request or the employer could make the request. But at the end of the day, the agreement has to be mutually agreed upon by both parties that this is beneficial to both. Okay, I, I have a question. Senator Noe. Yeah, um, Chair, you kind of added that this is a temporary thing. No, and, it's not. Well, okay. not. According, to the 20, according to the 2010 policy, it's been in the works. It's just nobody's used it. Okay, so the question is that Michelle and <clears throat> I don't is UPW on as well? Um, is, is the intent of the unions um, that this telework, because it seems like we're using pandemic as an, a, a, something that was temporary. So then we went into full-scale telework for many, many agencies. So is the intent of the unions, can you answer if this if you're in agreement to make this a permanent thing? Yes, Senator, we are in full support of having a permanent telework policy and have it as an option for employees where it's feasible and agreeable. Um, you know, our testimony does lightly touch upon this, but the there, there are many broader holistic conversations that we, policy conversation that we should be having at the legislature about an employee's quality of life, inclusive of their salary, but what types of tools does the employer have to entice quality candidates to join government service? And we strongly feel that telework is one, one of these tools that the employer can utilize to ensure that employees have a, a strong work-life balance. Yeah, well, I'd like to add as well, and something that Senator Kidani brought up as well is sort of when you're in teleworking, there's a liability and so um, at the workplace. So I think the discussion has to be longer than, I don't know, I, I feel uncomfortable right now, um, just voting on something that it's, it seems like it becomes mandatory, but I'd like to see a lot more and I support what we're planning on doing, um, but it's kind of like, we putting a, a lot of questions. So anyway, I, I just wanted to ask if, if you folks are considering this to be a permanent stuff. Yes, we are hopeful that okay. telework will always be an right. option for employees, yes. Thank you. Thank you, Senator. Yeah, Mike, are you still on? 
Yes, Chair. Um, so you're negotiating amendments to the 2010 or you're renegotiating the entire 2010 policy? Uh, I mean, it kind of just depends how you see it. We're, we're, re we're negotiating a new telework policy. That's going to replace the 2010 policy? Nope, that would replace the 2010 policy. Okay, we might want to do, um, we might want to have a discussion. I think that's what's, that's why I think the legislation is even more important because it creates a framework so that um, it's clear who's going to be doing the policy, who has what, who enforces the policy, what are going to be some of the minimum components of the policy. I mean, even when I'm reading the 2010 policy, it seems like most of it is applicable to today, but I'm not sure. Chair, can uh, I bring up something? Um, during the pandemic at school, some of the teachers were allowed to uh, telework and teach mm -hmm. from home and others were not. And that created a big ruckus. And I supported, you know, all the teachers being able to work at home. However, um, some of them wanted to work at home because there was no childcare and they had young children. Uh, what I'm hearing today is that if the state is liable for employees working at home and their home taking care of children or other dependents, you know, elder parents, or whatever, then are we liable for things that happen to them also because the employee was not paying attention to them? So I think this brings into question a little bit more liability on the state. And I think we need to um, really delve into this issue. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, anyone else? I think. Yeah, um, oh, yes. Yeah. I just want to say. I just want to say that uh, I um, better appreciate the um, concerns that um, the two chairs have on this on this issue. Um, you know, we there was a bill that went through the labor committee. We did not hear it uh, because um, in consultation with um, I guess the department as well as with HGA and um, there was there was active um, you know, negotiation on this item. And so I think we I felt that um, we should allow that negotiation, negotiation to take place and work those kind of details out in that situation, not legislate uh, in this way. And so um, I, I do, but I guess what happened was we, um, this bill uh, was amended, um, it was a short form bill that came up. Uh, we asked for referral, uh, we were denied. The labor committee was denied the re referral, um, but it's clearly within our jurisdiction. Uh, and so I guess respectfully, I'll be um, voting no on this bill um, and hope that um, the members will allow the, um, the department as well as HGA to negotiate this because it's clearly a negotiable item. Thank you. Okay, I just want to point out that we just voted earlier on the um, the what was it the uh, the standards board for law enforcement, and everyone voted on that, and and um, Shopo sent in a testimony similar, and so if you're that's very inconsistent if you voted for the earlier piece of legislation versus what's happening now. Well, I wasn't able to keep up with all the testimony and I apologize. Um, and, I, I, and I guess I get left it to the benefit of the doubt because that's with primarily with the city and county of Honolulu, not with the state, but. Okay. Okay. I just don't want us to be, you know, hypocritical. <laughs> yeah, me too. <laughs> okay. Any other questions? We've had good discussion on this. <coughs> okay. Uh, can we go into breakout? We're gonna yeah, um, no, recess. Huh? You gotta call a recess. Yeah. Recess.
reconvening the GBO WAM committee. Uh, what we will do, we're still in process on discussing, discussing Senate Bill 2940. So we will defer decision making until tomorrow, March 3rd, in this room, 211 at 9.55 a.m. This uh, committee, joint committee hearing is adjourned. Okay, calling the 1005 Ways and Means uh, agenda to order. First item, Senate Bill 2167. Recommendation is to pass with amendments, adopt LRB tech amendments, Include language from Doe Tax's testimony to remove provision on page one, line 15, that reads, a film infrastructure project occurring in more than one county may prorate its expenditures based upon the amount spent in each county if the population bases differ enough to change the percentage of tax credit. Specify that the tax credit cert certificate is to serve as a reservation of the 10 million aggregate cap. Specify that the tax credit voucher will serve as an as the actual certification that taxpayers will attach to their refunds when claiming the credit, remove language stating that the tax credit voucher will not be issued upon the completion of the project and make the deadline uniform with all taxpayers by making the deadline not no later than uh, March 31st, <clears throat> following the end of the year calendar, which eligible infrastructure costs were expended, defective date to 2050. Any discussion? Not sure what say. Okay, with all 11 members present, any reservations? Any opposition? Recommendation adopted. Thank you. Next item, Senate Bill 2302. Recommendation is to pass with amendments, adopt LRB tech amendments. And we're going to amend the measure to add $21.7 million of general fund appropriation into UH, UOH 900 for repair and maintenance of campus buildings and infrastructure. Any discussion? Not sure what say. Okay, with all the loan members present, any reservations? Any opposition? Recommendation adopted. Thank you. Next item, Senate Bill 2473. Uh, recommendation is to pass with amendments. We're going to insert a new section to amend the findings and purpose of ADC and 163D-1, amend 163-D. 163D-2 to redefine agriculture by deleting marketing and adding consumption within the state. Amend 163D-3 by adding local food production as a criterion for making for selecting members of the ADC board of directors. Inserting provisions that require the board to develop performance measures and conduct performance evaluations of the executive director and inserting language that documents specific authorities that are delegated from the board to the, the director the executive director. Amend, amend 163D-4 by deleting 6, 10, and 11, deleting crops and other crops by for local markets and inserting language to read agricultural products for local markets and local consumption, and shall promote and assist in commercial export of agricultural products. Amend 163-5 by requiring ADC to prepare and post the Hawaii Agribusiness Agri Plan to the corp corporation's website. Revising one by deleting due to the downsizing of sugar and pineapple industries that, and inserting provided that the inventory of agricultural lands under this paragraph shall be agricultural lands within the purview of the corporation. Revising by deleting, revising two by deleting that will be abandoned by sugar and pineapple industries and adding new language to read an inventory of available agricultural infrastructure, such as irrigation systems, drainage systems, processing facilities, and other necessary facilities that are controlled by the corporation. Deleting three to eight, adding new provision that requires ADC to analyze and plan for how it uses lands within its purview to increase local food production and replace imported products. Requiring that Hawaii Agribusiness Plan includes metrics, timeframes, and budget expectations as part of ADC's agribusiness development strategy. Requiring the ADC to update the Hawaii Agribusiness Plan no later than July 1st, 2023, and every five years thereafter provided that funding is provided by the legislature. Insert the following appropri appropriation language, adding 100,000 to assist ADC in preparing and finalizing the Agribusiness Plan under sections 163D-5 HRS, including the facilitation of community stakeholder involvement 
adding a blank appropriation for one permanent accountant position to provide accounting for other fiscal support services, adding 500,000 for security guard services to address trespassing, abandonment of vehicles on ADC land and other security issues on vacant land owned by the ADC, provided that once those lands are leased, secured costs for the property shall be funded by the Agricultural Corporation Association dues of the property tenants. Any discussion? If not, Chair is, is, oh. is there a defective date? Sorry. Oh, oh yeah, there's an appropriation, so we'll do a defective date. Any discussion? If not, Chair votes aye. Okay, we had 11 members present. Any reservations? Any opposition? Recommendation adopted. Thank you. Next item, Senate Bill 2480. Recommendation is to blank the appropriations. Amend section one to further clarify the purpose and intent of the measure. Revise section two to read the Department of Land and Natural Resources State Parks Division shall acquire the fee simple interest in the Waiwa irrigation system, including the following parcels. Add a new section authorizing the Director of Finance to issue general obligation bonds in the sum of 21 million for fiscal year 23 to the Department of Agriculture takes all necessary actions to repair and expand the spillway and bring it to compliance with all appropriate dam safety requirements. Include new appropriation of 5 million for the Department of Agriculture to purchase the fee simple interest of TMK 71012014 provided the acquisition is subject to appraisal pursuant to 171-30. Include two general fund appropriations and 180,000 for ADC and 1.5 million and four FTE for DLNR for the maintenance and management of their respectively owned portions of the Waihawa irrigation system. Oh, excuse me. Okay, it's include two general fund appropriations of 800,000 for ADC. Include language that prevents the Department of Land and Natural Resources from issuing fines to the Department of Agriculture for taking ownership of the dam and spillway and does not transfer any fines from the private owner to the Department of the Agriculture Department of Agriculture for dam and spillway deficiency and requires the governor to create a task force to negotiate the fee simple acquisition of the irrigation system from Dole Food Company. Short recess. Okay, um, reconvening. So I just want to clarify the revised section two. It should read that Department of Ag shall acquire the irrigation system and the dam and DLNR shall uh, acquire all the parcels related to the state parks and, uh, and, and fisheries. So the lands that would, would be attached to the park and, and the lake for recreational use would be DLNR the dam and the irrigation system would be Department of Ag. Okay, any discussion? Yeah, everybody has a defective date. Okay, if not, Chair votes aye. Okay, we have 11 members present. Any reservations? Any opposition? Recommendation adopted. Thank you. Next item, Senate Bill 2757. Uh, recommendation is to pass as is. Any discussion? Not sure about that. We have 11 members present. Any reservations? <laughs> Any opposition? Recommendation adopted. Thank you. Next item, Senate Bill 2768. Recommendation is to pass with amendments, adopt LRB tech amendments. Any discussion? Not sure about that. Okay, we have 11 members present. Any reservations? Any opposition? Recommendation adopted. Okay, next item, Senate Bill 3025. 
recommendation is to pass with amendments. We'll take from DCCH testimony to delete two holding electronic certificate representing interest in a thing of value on behalf of another person or issuing shares, delete a digital currency offered by or on behalf of the same publisher from which the original digital representation of value was received or quote, end quote, delete the phrase Electronic Fund Transfer Act of 1978, uh, 15 USC sections 1693 to 1693R, and on page 11, lines three to four, replace a financial institution chartered or licensed by chapter 412 with banks, bank holding companies, credit unions, saving banks, financial services, loan companies, and mutual banks organized under the laws of the United States or any state shall be exempt from the licensing and exemption examination provisions of this chapter. Any discussion? If not, Chair both side. Okay, with 11 members present, any reservations? Any opposition? Recommendation adopted. Okay, next item, Senate Bill 3135. Recommendation is to Pass with amendments, adopt LRB tech amendments, and per uh, Dillonar's testimony, amend to strike the following language from pages six, line seven to 10, which reads as follows. Third party reviewers shall be utilized to address backlogs within the department and may be released once the volume of permits reaches a manageable level for the existing department staff to review. Any discussion? Not Chair Volksai. Okay, with all members present, any reservations? Any opposition? Recommendation adopted. Thank you. Next item, Senate Bill 3192. Recommendation is to pass with amendments, adopt LRB tech amendments, and include language from the Attorney General's testimony pertaining to the grant process for HRS 383-128, subsections F and G with additional language to grant legal access to state-owned land for the purposes of the grant as necessary. Delete the phrase community-based organizations on page 11, line 20. Delete items two and three on pages 12, lines one through nine, and blank the percentage provisions. Enable the department through administrative rules to establish a process to avoid potential double charge at existing parks, such as Diamond Head and Hanama Bay and include clarifying language in the preamble and grant sections. Any discussion? Not Chair Votsai. Okay, with all members present, any reservations? Any opposition? Recommendation adopted. Thank you. Next item, Senate Bill 3226. Recommendation is to pass with amendments, adopt LRB tech amendments. Amend to include language modeled after California law to address the accessibility concerns highlighted in testimony. Uh, language will be similar to in information made available over the internet pursuant to this section shall be, shall meet or exceed the most current ratified standards under section 508 of the Federal Rehabilitation Act of 1973. 29 USC section 794D as amended by the Web Content Accessibility Guidelines 2.0 adopted by the World Wide Web Consortium of Accessibility. Any discussion? If not, Chair Votsai. Okay, with all members present, any reservations? Any opposition? Recommendation adopted. Thank you. Next item, Senate Bill 3282. Recommendation, we're gonna defer this uh, to tomorrow, March 3rd, 10 a.m. in this room. Next item, Senate Bill 3355. We're going to defer this item till tomorrow, 10 a.m. in this room. Okay, calling the 1015 agenda to order. First item, Senate Bill 2132, recommendation is to pass with amendments, blanking the appropriations. Any discussion? Not Chair Votsai. Okay, with all members present, any reservations? Any opposition? Recommendation adopted. Thank you. Next item, Senate Bill 2194, recommendation passed with amendments. 
adopt the LRB tech amendments, ag clarifying amendment, noting that it is the State Department of Ag that will have the authority to submit a special local need registration to the US Environmental Protection Agency in order to permit oval controls use on feral chickens and effective date to 2095, sir, not 2094. Yeah, on oh. Senate Bill 2195, recommendations to pass with amendments. Any 11 members present, any reservations? Any opposition? Recommendation adopted. Thank you. Next item, Senate Bill 2218, recommendation is to pass with amendments, adopt LRB tech amendments, amend the grant to state that all that as a condition of eligibility, the food hub must comply with all state and federal food safety regulations, including FDA's Food Safety and Modernization Act and its provisions for supplier verification, effective date to 2050. Any discussion? Not sure we'll say. Okay, with all members present, any reservations, any opposition, recommendation adopted. Thank you. Next item, Senate Bill 2437, recommendation passed with amendments, adopt LRB tech amendments, effective date to 2050. Any discussion? Not sure we'll say. Okay, with all members present, any reservations? Any opposition? Recommendation adopted. Thank you. Next item, Senate Bill 2504. Recommendation is to pass with amendments effective the date to 2050. Any discussion? Not sure we'll say. Okay, with all members present, any reservations? Any opposition? Recommendation adopted. Thank you. Next item, Senate Bill 2609. Recommendation is to pass with amendments, adopt the LRB tech amendments, blank the appropriation effective date to 2050. Any discussion? Okay, we have 11 members present. Any reservations? Any opposition? Recommendation adopted. Thank you. Next item, Senate Bill 2678. Recommendation passed with amendments. Adopt LRB tech amendments. Defect the date to 2050. Okay, with all members present, any reservations? Any opposition? Recommendation adopted. Thank you. Next item, Senate Bill 2735. Recommendation is to pass as is. Any discussion? Not with all 11 members present, any reservations? Any opposition? Recommendation adopted. Thank you. Next item, Senate Bill 2736. Recommendation passed as is. Any discussion? Not sure what's that. Okay, with 11 members present, any reservations? Any opposition? Recommendation adopted. Thank you. Next item, Senate Bill 2737. Recommendation passed with amendments. LRB tech amendments. Thank the appropriation. Any discussion? Not sure what's that. Okay, with 11 members present, any reservations? Any opposition? Recommendation adopted. Thank you. Next item, Senate Bill 2772. Recommendation passed with amendments. Blank the appropriation. Defective date to 2050. Any discussion? Not sure what's that. Okay, we have 11 members present. Any reservations? Any opposition? Recommendation adopted. Thank you. Next item, Senate Bill 2816. Recommendation passed with amendments. LRB tech amendments. And let add language to clarify the measures, intent, and scope. Amend five supplemental education services to read supplemental education services as permitted under the constitution of the state of Hawaii, defective date to 2050. Any discussion? Not sure what's that. Okay, with all members present, any reservations? Any opposition? Recommendation adopted. Thank you. Next item, Senate Bill 2960, recommendation passed with amendments. Adopt LRB tech amendments, amend the appropriation to replace in the budget of the department's chairperson, AGR 192, defective date to 2050. Any discussion? Not sure what's that. Okay, with all members present, any reservations? Any opposition? Recommendation adopted. Thank you. Next item, Senate Bill 3280, recommendation passed with amendments, effective date to 2050. Any discussion? Not sure what's that. Okay, with all members present, any reservations? Any opposition? Recommendation adopted. Thank you. Next item, Senate Bill 20, 3298, recommendation passed with amendments, adopt the LRB tech amendments. The effective date to 2050. Any discussion? Not sure what's that. Okay, with 11 members present, any reservations? Any opposition? Recommendation adopted. Thank you. Next item, Senate Bill 3299. Recommendation passed with amendments. Adopt LRB tech amendments. Amend, amend HRS 183D23A to read game mammals and game birds managed in appro appropriate areas can provide a sustainable food source that merit quali quality habit habitats with sufficient food, water, and refuge to support viable populations sufficient for hunting, provided that negative impacts to the environment are sufficiently min minimized or offset through native ecosystem pr protections. Any discussion? Not sure vote side. Okay, with all members present, any reservations? Any opposition? Recommendation adopted. Thank you. Next item, Senate Bill 3325. Recommendation is to pass with amendments, adopt LRB tech amendments, effective date to 2050. Any discussion? Not sure what's that. Okay, with all members present, any reservations? Any opposition? Recommendation adopted. Thank you. Next item, Senate Bill 30. 
3.30, recommendation is to pass as is. Any discussion? Not sure both sides. Okay, with 11 members present, any reservations? Any opposition? Recommendation adopted. Thank you. Next item, Senate Bill 3335. Recommendation is to pass with amendments, blank the appropriation, effective date to 2015. Any discussion? Not sure both sides. Okay, with 11 members present, any reservations? Any opposition? Recommendation adopted. Thank you. Next item, Senate Bill 3338. Recommendation is to pass with amendments, adopt LRB tech amendments, blank the appropriation, effective date to 2015. Any discussion? Not sure both sides. Okay, with 11 members present, any reservations? Any opposition? Recommendation adopted. Thank you, members. Adjourn.